Hello my lovely friends and welcome back to my studio. Today I will show you how to draw a leaf in a really lovely and very calming and relaxing tutorial. For this tutorial you would need some paper, smudging materials, pencils, erasers and some other helpful things. I found these leaves, they are sort of dried up and very textured. They also have these little drying up bits here on the, you see, just, just right there. And normally you wouldn't look at things like this in your normal everyday life and say, oh, they're super beautiful. But that's the thing. When you start to draw and paint, you start to see beauty in very ordinary things that normally you just brush it off as garbage. Today, I would like to do a very detailed drawing of one of these. I think I'm going towards this one here just because it has these, you know, little holes in it as well. It just adds to the story of the leaf. So I think I will position this leaf something like that on the piece of paper. I'm going to place it right by myself so I can have a really good look and you would be able to look at the drawing that's happening. I will start with a very simple structure. I'm going to first mark an oval as an overall shape. Those of you at home that are following along, you don't need to press as hard on the pencil. I'm trying to do this so that it's a little bit more visible in the camera. And the next important thing is this one here. It's the line of the leaf, the, the main vein of the leaf. Now we need to pay attention to the overall changes in the shape of the leaf. So each leaf would have its own different shape, creases on one side and on the other. It is super important to study them. Little wobble. Another little indentation and that little bit that has been either chewed up by a caterpillar or broken off somehow. By the way, I believe these are leaves from the persimmon tree and a couple of more little details of things being eaten away, broken away, you know, that sort of a weathering that's happened to the leaf. A little hole in there as well. Now I'm going to grab an eraser and remove the lines that I don't need. Next, I'm going to go into more detailed observation and I suggest you do the same because this is the step when you can pencil in all the little irregularities. Like for example, there's a little bit that's missing here and a little bit that's missing here out of the leaf. I can actually see that the leaf rolls on itself a little bit on that area set of veins and so here are the little veins that i'm talking about so this is the main one and these are the the other ones one on the side one on the side see this one starts quite regularly and then they sort of start to wander away and they're not very visible there now next step is to mark through a really dark shadows on the leaf itself and falling shadows or cast shadows. So this is the shadow that the leaf is casting on itself and the cast shadow. So I'm still going to keep using 3B pencil for my first steps of shading. There are two ways to do shading in a situation like this. Number one is to really start working from the darkest areas and then work your way into the lighter ones. Or step number two, start working with the medium shades and then add lighter and darker areas onto this. I will choose the second way, but if you're more used to working with the first way, you can do that too. Okay, so for this type of shading, I'm going to really softly apply an overall color and the same with the shadow. Very uniform color, you don't need to worry about darker and lighter areas at this stage. Then I'm going to grab one of my smudge sticks and really softly 
go over the shaded areas. The one thing that you, I want you to keep an eye on at this stage is that you don't make areas or edges that are quite soft or overly harsh. So you want to make sure that you still soften everything up. Okay, so now we've got this gray blob in the middle of the page, which is perfect for this stage of the drawing. This is not the stage where you want to see all the details. This is the stage where it looks blobby and gray, so don't overdo things before their time. At this stage, if you want to soften things even more, you can go over it with a fluffy brush. It gives you a little bit more of the you know point of value when you go in with an eraser to create lighter highlights. Okay, so now is the time that you can start looking a little bit more into the details and some of the tonal values. I'm still going with my 3B pencil. Later on I'll be moving onto something a little bit darker and softer. But what I would like to do now is to create these shadows. Just mark them through a little bit darker. We might need to create some highlights in those areas or shade them even darker. But I do want to mark the darker areas at this stage. Remember it kind of was like in this wavy sort of a line like that. I can still see it um, as I've marked it the first time but you probably guys already can't just because lenses on cameras are nowhere near as strong as our eyes. And I can see that main vein in the center like a spine of the leaf is going away so I'm going to just go over it again. It's very important to have it marked through there because this is your main point of reference just like the outline, uh, the outside shape of the leaf as well. And also to, to get rid of all these pencil lines that are not really there to describe the form or anything like this but only there to deposit the graphite onto the paper. Later on you will see once we start to put in the textures through you would not really want to have them there. You also want to pay attention if these shadows follow through a little bit onto somewhere or you know what they're doing uh, because you might want to, there's a little bit more of a shadow there, because you might want to uh, put these ones in now as well. Okay. So this is another, it's not even a full step, it's more like half a step. So the next one is to actually go in and start working on a little bit more of the texture. Now I'm still working with the 3B, so you don't really want anything super, super soft uh, at this stage. So here I'm going to start marking through the darker areas, you know, the little dried up edges. Are you learning new things in this video? Is this something interesting? Is this something you'd like to learn more about? If so, please check out my Patreon page as I do have more videos that cover a lot of different techniques and fundamentals and things like that that you might like to see. We also do a monthly competition where one group of patrons suggests videos and ideas and everyone else votes on them and then the idea that gets the most votes gets made into a tutorial uh, that way people can also win artwork and so on so make sure to check it out okay let's get back to drawing the sleeve and just keep in mind that you can always go darker that's why it's so important to start working with pencils that are not your darkest because then you know that if you need to go darker there's always that opportunity. This is very detailed work as well. If you don't like working with details but still want to follow along with this you can make a larger drawing, the actual leaf to fill in the whole piece of paper. If you want something to be quite dark, the best way to do it is to apply more layers rather than uh, just going and 
really really dark full strength it's just that when you're applying things in layers first of all the pencil application is smoother and secondly you can always stop if you feel that this is dark enough or leave it till later rather than going in full strength and then realizing you've done too much trying to erase it and it doesn't always work out in a good way make sure you take your time so now you want to be going around some little details like this and as you come across them make sure that you pay more attention to your object because this is the time when you don't want to overdo things as you can see this shadow application is really helping us show the three-dimensional um, view of the sleeve because remember it's we're trying to create a 3d look on a flat 2d surface so you need to the only thing that you have to do that is just shadow and light that's why it's so important to pay attention to those things Oh, and one little thing I forgot to mention, I usually do in all of my tutorials when we, when I'm working with graphite and showing you how to draw things. Uh, if you don't have things like smudge sticks, they're not super expensive. You can find them for a reasonably, you know, reasonably cheap price, but you would need to go to the art shop for that. So if you don't have them, but you would still like to follow along you can always use things like rolled up paper towels like this or sort of like a, a cotton bud that can do a similar job especially on the details and things like that okay so for my next step I'm going to use a very fine mechanical pencil if you don't have one of those I'm pretty sure everyone has those these days but if you don't have one of those you can always just keep sharpening your pencil quite sharply you might have to do it quite often that's that's the idea of using this and so with this little tiny pencil i can get into more details there are you know those little dark spots and it's very handy especially because the drawing is quite small as well And as I'm looking at the edge of the actual leaf, I can see that there are some darker little sort of spots on the on the leaf. So make sure that you add those in as well if you're drawing along with me or if you are if you own the leaf has that same situation. working on more uh, working on more details and adding more of the tiny little specks and things carefully working through all the little things that you see on the way it's almost like you're scanning your leaf you know when you're looking at your leaf you're scanning it and you're trying to portray everything on here that's that's the way that you need to work if you want to create a realistic and reasonably detailed uh, look to your artwork the direction and the markings on the leaves it's, it's not the super important thing but if you are trying to create a specific leaf then it is important and that's another interesting thing about drawing objects you normally you wouldn't pay so much attention to something like a, a leaf that's drying up you know something from pretty something that you would consider trash really but when you do you find all these really beautiful things patterns and things like that this side is a little bit contrasty so possibly because you know it sort of curls down just a little bit and there's a little bit of a shadow so these are the kind of things that you 
you want to make sure that you put in there's a little bit more of that dried up contrast now for some more smudging and now with every layer as we darken it and we smudge it in we start to see the leaf appear in front of us it's almost like you're sculpting it creating a 3d look on a 2d surface okay so so far i have been using 3b pencil and you can see that it can give us a really nice shading effect with you know along with the little uh, mechanical pencil so now for this stage we want to use something a little bit softer and a little bit darker so i'm going to move on to the 7b pencil if you've got something like 6b or 8b or something around that number all of those would be fine to use for this stage that's another very common beginner mistake as well as that in shading forgetting to go through to the really dark areas and so then everything looks very light and lacks that contrast and so things don't look very three-dimensional And by now you're not going in blind you pretty much have your map full map of your leaf here so you know exactly which areas you want to be darker and which you want to leave as they are and again just like before a little bit more smudging smudging helps you to bring in a bit more control into some areas like for example you can move graphite a little bit more to the right or to the left depending on the movements of your smudge sticks blend sticks and at this stage if there are any areas that you still want to make darker make sure that you add this in now because next step will be going with the eraser and making some things lighter so for this technique you can even squint if you squint and look at your object or a photograph if you're working with a photograph you will be able to see areas that still need to be called but darker and then again with a smudge stick so next tool on the list of things that we're going to use is the putty rubber now it is very very useful here please do not try to use blue tech instead of that you do need a putty rubber putty eraser needed eraser there's lots of names for it but it's just the one thing it's an eraser that is very soft and blendable you can shape it with your fingers into tiny little things to create highlights and tap gently to remove some of the graphite and so now anywhere where I see areas that are a little bit lighter than on the actual object like for example right next to that super dried up almost like a dark dark brown areas I'm going to put a little bit of that through the coloring for this leaf is not very smooth it's quite patchy so you can go ahead and create your highlights in the patchy kind of a way as well and these highlights are not the brightest or the strongest or anything like this they're just there to create a very similar look and feel on your paper as on the actual leaf in real life there's also a light highlight that's coming through as part of the texture of the leaf right next to the bright line few veins that are a little bit lighter as well so make sure you put them through it too to do that uh, make sure to really shape your eraser very thin and then just put them through and just keep and keep building those lines up only where you see them they're not as visible everywhere perhaps not as bright or not all the way through 
you know, just because the leaf is maybe turning or something like that. Shadow, you might see them more as a darker color rather than a lighter color. If you see any of the other lines, remember that we marked up before, if you see any of those visible in lighter shade, make sure you put those through as well. I can see a few, so I'm just going to very quickly You don't need to follow each one where it is exactly. This is not photorealism, but you want to create that feel of that specific leaf. Our next friend we're going to use is we're going to go back to our little mechanical pencil. And we're going to go through with quite a bit of detail and look at any point that you see that is darker, like maybe there are little blemishes on the leaf, maybe the line goes darker or lighter, or maybe there's just a little bit more contrast on one side or the other, and bring those through. At this stage you can work interchangeably with your smudge stick and your pencil because now we're focusing much more on separate areas so we're just looking at this area here so once you've created the shading that you want you might want to go in and give it a bit of a smudge straight away and this is the time to add super detailed edges and crispy things and you know things that were a little bit smudged through when you were drawing In some situations you would actually notice that on the veins of the leaf, even though they look lighter, in the middle of the line you would see darker areas. So you can go ahead and put those through as well. We're really getting there now with our leaf. But there is one thing that we just started and we marked through and we haven't followed through at all. The shadow that the leaf is casting um, by blocking the light. What we want to do now is we want to go for you know the 7B or 6B pencil, whatever you have that's quite soft and dark and very softly pay attention to how it is falling. So what you want to do is you want to really pay attention because the shadow it's not just the shape of it but it's also how it changes its darkness all through somewhere it's very sharp depending on the light that is you know falling onto that object also how close it is so a lot of the times you would see that the closer the shadow to the actual object the more sharper the line the contrast would be and the further away the shadow gets moves away from the object the hazier it looks so these are little just a little things to watch out for maybe one day I'll I'll manage to do a tutorial that's just about shadows it's, it's a really interesting subject but I don't know how many of you guys are interested so if you are interested please make sure to comment on that in the comment section and then I'll know that this is something you guys would want to see. Of course, next we're going to go, because we're going for the really soft um, look without many brush, uh, I mean, pencil marks. <laughs> and we want to just give it a little bit of a smudge. Another thing to watch out for is to compare your shadow to the actual object, what is darker and in which areas and so on. So you can get the right values. So here it's a little bit softer, the shadow, because it's moving further away from the leaf. 
here it's kind of a little bit softer there but then it is quite sharp so now I'm going to use this pencil to work over the areas that are quite sharp like that here and like this here but still I can see that the you know those little dried up patches of the leaf are quite a bit darker than the shadow so I'm going to put those in as they are okay so I mean we can finish up the stage but there are just a couple more little things that I would like to do and I would like to change the intensity of the shadow as well because in some areas like here it is darker but here it's a little bit lighter than what we have on the paper at the moment so I'm going to use the petty rubber to make some of these areas a little bit lighter over here too We don't want to remove all of the graphite, we just want to make it a little bit lighter. And in here there's actually a little bit of light that's coming through underneath the leaf. Now I just need to give it a little bit more definition with a smudge stick, so just give it a softer, smudgier look. This part of the shadow is ready. And just a little bit more over here, so just really softly. And now we are coming up really to the end. So now I will show you a little secret that you can do at the end of your drawings. And it will always sort of take them up to the next level. And that is to give it an overall buff. Kind of like as if you're you know, polishing this just a little bit. Now what this would do is it would actually smudge the highlights and the shadows a little bit and then what you can do is go over some of the brightest brightest little areas like I can see some highlights here on the leaf and just you can go quite bold at this stage and create some highlights reflections of light over the texture of the leaf over the shadows and anything that your eye picks out so anything that really really stands out maybe some veins or anything like this at this stage that's what you want to put in of course if you're not planning to go super detailed or you don't have time or anything like this then you can skip that part but this is just to really finish everything up there's a highlight there and there's a bit of a highlight that's going on there. Another little useful tool is one of these erasers as well that you can use. Now these are real sort of a if you really want to bring something out and I'm going to actually use it for this little hole here because it's so bright over there there's no shadow or anything like this that's falling onto the you know to the background it's really really bright and the same thing here as well just highlighting and that contrast really brings those things out forward and makes them look super realistic and you can do the same thing in some other darker areas like here and you see how there is that contrast because we buffed it quite a bit now if you don't want to go all the way and light everything up you can always just use your putty rubber to softly merge that light light area with that almost slightly hazy area and just working on these finishing final little changes and colorations depending on how you were working you might not even need to do them but I'm just adding a couple of little darker areas and this time I'm not even going to smudge them these little lines can just add to the texture of the leaf
enhance some of the shadows especially because you know we did that smudging process so the smudging process kind of evens everything out together it creates shadows that are not so dark and highlights that are not so bright so kind of gives you another chance to look over things and really bring some of them up how did you guys go those of you that followed along let me know let me know if there is anything else that you'd be interested to see here on youtube and if there are any other maybe simple objects or some things that you guys struggle with or would like to find out more about you know as i said just leave me a comment down below if you are i'll just put a couple of blemishes here while i'm chatting and if you know if there are any interesting topics or anything like this that you would like to see a video on i would be more than happy to hear about it and hopefully be able to make a video on that topic for you guys on patreon there are more videos that you can view on different techniques watercolor pastels graphite you know all sorts of different things and you might like to check that out i also would like to say a big thank you to my wonderful patrons who are already supporting me there it's a really big help for this channel and also there are extra videos and things like that that are available for those who are really truly seriously interested on this note i would like to say thank you very much for drawing with me and i hope you guys have a lovely lovely day and hopefully i'll um, see you soon in the next video